Despite the new console generation offering incredible visuals and cinematic experiences, I find myself getting more enjoyment from the small indie games that owe more to a retro style of gaming than the modern advances, with some of the best games in the last couple of years being Hotline Miami, Guacamelee and Fez. SteamWorld Dig is the latest indie game to make it to the PS4 and Vita. Previously available on 3DS and Steam, SteamWorld Dig is a mining platform action adventure game created by Swedish independent developer Image and Form, with elements of Spelunky, Mr. Driller and the subgenre that has become known as Metroidvania. You play as Rusty the Robot, who is at the centre of a western steampunk world. The goal is to explore the various mines in the game world and uncover its secrets. The core mechanic of the gameplay is digging. You will start with a basic pickaxe. Your goal is to make your way down whilst mining rare minerals. You will periodically fill your sack and need to return to the surface to sell the resources you've collected. With the cash you buy upgrades for your equipment, making it easier to traverse the mines. This opens up areas previously unattainable as you purchase drills and hammer fists to crack tougher rocks. The collection upgrade system is at the heart of the game and fans of Metroid, Castlevania and more recently the excellent Guacamelee will be right at home with this style of gameplay. This is not a long game, it can be completed in 3-4 to four hours. Though I was longer the first time due to obsessive mining, which leads me to the game's greatest strength. It's highly addictive, and there is plenty to keep you coming back for more to uncover and improve upon your previous playthrough. The visuals are great, and even though it might not have the style of something like Guacamelee, it does have an art style all of its own, and the cavernous worlds look best when illuminated by your lantern. You will find a lot of dangers in the mine, and at times this game was extremely difficult. You would often forget about the dangers and end up dying, which can be a pretty big setback as you will be charged a fee to respawn, often losing half the funds you have collected. And with only a certain amount of minerals in the mine, in theory you could die enough times to ruin your playthrough and struggle to buy back the items you need so badly. Also, when you die you drop your minerals, and you have to trek back to where you dropped them to pick them up. In that respect, the game reminds me of Demon Souls, though to put it in that difficulty bracket would be overstating it. Thankfully, the core mechanics of the game are extremely fun, you will get good in no time, and you will want to upgrade those tools to glide through the rocks with ease. The structure of the game is often a little unclear. With no levels as such, you will often wonder where it is all leading, but I found that the finale was a pretty good payoff. Though I won't spoil it, it wraps up quite well, and when the credits roll, it isn't unexpected. Unfortunately, though the game is a cross-buy on the PS4 and Vita, cross-save is not supported, so you can't carry on your playthrough on another console. That said, there is no new game plus, so no real need for it. So your next game will be solely with the intention of bettering your previous playthrough and getting those trophies. Overall, this is one of the best games I've played this year. Highly addictive, challenging, rewarding and will keep you coming back for more. I find it perfectly suited to handheld gaming, though it also plays great on the PS4. I wish it had been longer, but it can be picked up at a low cost so you can't go wrong. A great addition to the growing catalogue of indie games, SteamWorld has got me digging through the indie marketplace for more like this.